All right, Mr. Stanicky, we are we're, recording. We're good. All right. So our philosophy, what we believe, we believe that all children should have the opportunity to play an instrument. If there is any reason why you feel hesitant about getting an instrument, we are certainly here to help you in, in doing so. And uh, we will have later on a representative from Music and Arts who will be sharing with you some, a, uh, their rent to own program. Instrumental music not only helps a child grow musically, but intellectually. There are so many studies out there that show um, the way that studying music helps grow the mind. And it really adds to a, a well-rounded education that we believe all students should have. Being in the band benefits the school and community through public performances of quality music, promoting and enhancing the dignity and reputation for Pendelco. So in a lot of areas, the instrumental music or you know the marching band thinking at the high school they are one of the premier faces of the school district so um it is such a great way to help promote spirit of of all three communities that we have aston brookhaven and parkside and show the 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 love that we have uh, for our schools Band is a team with many young mu musicians working for a common goal. So as we are coming together eventually, hopefully, uh, when, we, when we meet as a, as a whole entire group, we learn that everybody has a part to play. There's no one sitting on that sideline. Everyone gets to participate to the best of their ability. And of course, band is and should always be fun, right? Most of us do this because of the, the thrill that we get when we play our instrument. So uh, it is always our goal to instill fun in our classrooms. So usually I pl we play one or one uh, one video. I think the video that we're going to go with today will be this one. Teachers always say you should never give up, but I almost did give up. I wasn't very good at music, not at first, but everyone told me to keep trying. Not just the teachers, the other kids too. Well, I did stick with it, and I'm getting better all the time. I've worked really hard at it. And now I love music so much, I'm glad I was tough enough to stay with. I was born with some pretty serious health problems, which also made it hard for me to learn. School was so frustrating. I tried hard, but I just couldn't get it. Until I started taking music lessons. It was like magic. The better I got at piano, the better I got in school. After a rough start, I actually became an honor student all because of music. I never saw myself as a person others would want to follow. When I joined my high school marching band, I was just another face in the crowd. Through that experience, I started to realize that I had leadership qualities. So I grabbed the opportunity and all of a sudden, everyone was following my lead, following me. Who knows if I ever would have gotten there without music. So I love that whole entire think beyond the bubbles and uh, maybe we're seeing a change in uh, the way that uh, schools are being steered. Uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen as far as standardized testing, whether it's here or not. Um, music is always there to, to help support the growth that can't be judged based on standardized testing.
If you would like to get in contact with us, here is our information. It's just our first initial, last name at pdsd.org. Or actually, our teacher web pages cannot be accessed at the pdsd.org any longer. Um, those can be found on our Schoology pages. Mr. Orlando, would you like to? Sure. Uh, this is just um, class codes for my Schoology courses, uh, for my classes. Uh, if you have already not been receiving Schoology messages from me, um, panel B band, there is the code there, panel A band, Parkside B band, and Parkside A band. What B band and A band means, and we're going to be referencing B band and A band a lot tonight, B band is for any student that it is their first year in band. Most of the time that's fourth grade students, but we do have some fifth grade students that is their first year in band. And then A band is uh, the band for any student who has spent at least two years, or, or I should say this is their second year in band. Those are the class codes for the school you pages. Now, if your student is uh, a member of the Aston or Coburn bands, they should already be enrolled in school in all of the uh, in the Schoology course uh, called instrumental music. If for some reason that they are not, please let me know and I will make sure that they are on those pages. Um, so music lessons while virtual. Today was actually day one of virtual music lessons. Um, they will occur on Zoom. Lessons are 30 minutes weekly. Uh, they will take place on the same day each week and they will take place at the same time. Um, so essentially, if the fourth grade saxophones at Parkside, B-band saxophones have their lesson Monday at 1.40 p.m. Every Monday at 1.40, those Parkside B-band saxophone players will go to my Schoology page, click on the Zoom link, and they will come in for their saxophone lesson once a week for 30 minutes. Um, also, for at-home practice, we are supplementing our Zoom lessons with a uh, website, a program called smart music. That is something for families who had children in band last year. We used that in the spring um, to various degrees of success. Uh, in the fall though, I know Mr. Stadnicki and I are feeling much more confident about implementing smart music within our buildings. Um, this is a, a smart music as a supplement. It's really to aid at home practice. Um, all of the learning, new notes, new rhythms, going over songs, that work will be done during the Zoom weekly lesson with smart music supplementing the at-home practice. Special thanks to the Pendoco School District who uh, saw the value of smart music in the spring and purchased uh, licenses so that all instrumental music students in our district can have access this year to smart music at no cost to them. That was, uh, that was fantastic. That's going to be really awesome for us to use. So thank you, Pendoco. So one thing to mention that it is uh, a little crazy right now uh, through all this virtual uh, digital learning, but I wanted to, you know, mention that it is the student's responsibility to know what time their lesson is and um, to log into the Zoom lesson. The, the links are all on our Schoology pages. They're also communicated through emails and messages on Schoology. So if they are to um, receive a lesson at say 940, 
they should know to log off of their class that they are currently in, hop in, find that code on Schoology, and come in for their lesson at that time. It's not like if we were in person in the past where we were able to just walk down the hallway and find them in their homerooms. Now we, we're really going to have to rely uh, on students to re be, uh, be responsible for those things. And when I've been telling uh, classroom teachers about guiding students to their Zoom lesson for band is, it works the same way as them going to their special where they will leave their classroom teacher zoom meeting go to their courses find their band course and then on that main page will be the zoom link uh, i do see a hand raised and i just want to uh, let everyone know that's watching uh, if you have a question we ask that you use the q a feature to type it in uh, which we will either respond to through text or answering it live uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Now, in under normal circumstances, we have three uh, different uh, components of learning a musical instrument. Um, not knowing what the future has to hold. We can't really speak too much to the slide other than the part about the lessons. Again, they're occurring during school. And if for some reason, you know, say they forgot, or maybe there is a doctor's appointment or something like that, uh, we will have times to uh, schedule for makeups. So just send us an email. We'll be happy to make sure that those happen. And until we actually have some clearance, uh, eventually we will be able to get to rehearsals and put on concerts. Uh, Mr. Stanicki, do you want to take some time to answer a question live? Because it's a very good question. Sure. So we have the question. Will this, I have right Will this interrupt class time? What if our child is already pulled out for learning support and other things? So one of the fun tasks that Mr. Orlando and I have had is coming up with our schedule and creating times that will not conflict with uh, learning support, uh, you know, reading club or speech, speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, all of those things. So um, if, you're, if your child is scheduled for a lesson during the same time that they should be receiving services, please let us know. Um, you know, especially within these first week or two, nothing's really going to be set in stone. Uh, so as we find out that, oops, sorry, we missed having, uh, we missed that this child is receiving this service at this time, um, we'll be doing some flipping around. So uh, on the other side of that too, you know, those who are asked to have their lesson time changed because of something like that, uh, we thank you for your flexibility and sorry for the confusion in advance. We're doing our super best to make sure that those conflicts are happening. But there are going to be times where uh, some smaller groups will be meeting during uh, small group time for both ELA and for math. But a good portion of our lessons are going to be in the afternoon uh, during, uh, you know, teacher check-in time, as well as Wednesday afternoon where we have the mindful, uh, mindful Wednesdays. And then one second question here from uh, Ryan Clark. What about the kids that would like to continue for a second year band but are not in an environment where they can do a lesson during the day while virtual? Okay. Uh, I would Go say ahead. that is a case by case basis. Uh, so uh, Ryan Clark, Mr. Clark, you are one of my band parents. So I will be reaching out to you in an email uh, to see what we can figure out to make this the most conducive. Um, I would say in general, and this is something we're gonna be talking about uh, later on is, um, we know the struggles of having an instrument being played at home. Uh, Mr. Steinicki and I also being students like that at one point. Um, it's hard sometimes to find that space where playing an instrument at home can be uh, 
the least disruptive or just having an environment wherever they can play. Um, it, the goal is to find a spot for your student for 30 minutes a week where playing an instrument can happen and will be the least distracting for everyone. Uh, but like I said, this is a case by case basis. So Mr. Clark, I'll be reaching out to you. Um, we can figure this thing out together. Thank you for the question. Yeah, I would think they could, they, I, you know, just answering, they could probably still attend the lesson, you know, airplay. And then that is exactly why we have um, advocated for smart music subscriptions, because then they could practice the things that we talk about during our lessons when the time is more convenient um, for playing an instrument. So we want to mention that joining the band is a year-long commitment. It's just like learning a whole brand new language uh, without diligent practice and actually long-term practice. You're not really going to see the benefits that come from being, uh, from being a part of music lessons. Of course, we understand extreme situations come up all the time. We could certainly uh, discuss them. We are always available. We have the Schoology messages. You know, feel free to email us. We're always happy and we get back to you as soon as we can. Changing instruments is, gonna, is something that should be discussed with us with, as the instrumental music teachers um, in, on a case-by-case -case basis. You know, if, you're, if your child was, is, is currently in fifth grade, they were learning the flute in fourth grade, but now they're interested in playing the trumpet. Now would certainly be the time to do that kind of a switch. Um, it'll be a lot easier to, to discuss that and make those arrangements now rather than um, come January. Because once, you know, January is around, now we're kind of in this limbo area where, um, they're, they're, they can't, they're not quite ready for, to be in the advanced group if they're all, you know, in the advanced stages. And they're just a little bit too far behind to join the beginner class. So, um, but of course things do come up. We understand that, you know, maybe the instrument that, you, the, the, that your student is on, uh, we come to find out that it's just really not a good fit. And, you know, if, if, you know, they're trying and trying and trying and for, and for some reason the appropriate sounds aren't coming out, then maybe, yeah, we could investigate what it could be to um, try an instrument that might be a better fit. And we do believe that this is something that can be done all the way through life. Even if you're a music major or not a music major, you could participate in so many different local organizations, community bands, community orchestras, things like that. I play with the Rose Tree Pops Orchestra, and in there are so many different diverse backgrounds of the people playing in that orchestra that music is something that can unify us together in that kind of setting. So we believe that not only is this a year long commitment, this is something that your child can take with them all the way into their 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. Agreed, agreed. Uh, I was not everyone who is a musician becomes a music teacher. Um, the one thing I, I like to tell my students all the time is whatever you do, I just hope you keep music in your life. And this is one of those things that lets your child keep music in their life. It's a skill that can stick with them for the long run. And eventually when they make it to the, the middle or probably more so the high school, they can even consider playing, I don't know, an oboe or a bassoon where you can have plenty of scholarships out there that schools, that music schools offer to their students, even those who aren't majoring in music. They just want those <laughs> instruments in their ensembles. Uh, so for required materials, um, the instrument, which renting instruments we will get to later on, um, the method book or our lesson book is something um, 
depending if you're using music and arts for your rental, that will be included in the rental package. Um, however, uh, Mr. Steinicki and I can direct you how to get a music book. Uh, they're readily and easily available. Uh, you can also just purchase those by themselves from music and arts as an example. Uh, we do recommend a music stand for at home practice. The music stand will be able to um, hold their lesson book um, on it. Now, an example of a music stand right here. Right, so we have our music stand. It folds down. They would place their lesson book right on here. The ones they would probably get for at home is more of a wire stand, um, not just the solid piece of metal, but it does make practicing at home a lot easier for them to have a place to put their book on. I've seen a lot of families get very creative with finding places to put their lesson book so it stays propped up and open, but a music stand is the best way to do that. Uh, a pencil for writing in their lesson book. Of course, we're gonna be doing a lot of writing. Um, a music folder, um, which is something that could be needed depending on the amount of supplies they need. We do have some, we can get you those if we need to. Um, valve oil for brass instruments, like trumpets and trombones. Once again, if you're going through music and arts, that will be included. Um, reeds for saxophones and clarinets, specifically a strength of 2.5. They come in boxes of tens. That is something if you are a parent, a family member of a reed player, um, that is a quick and easy link to the correct box. There's a lot of boxes of reeds. They all start to look the same pretty quickly. Um, a quick message to Mr. Stadnicki or I, and we can guide you down the right path for that. But once again, going through music and arts, that will be included. Um, smart music, signing up for smart music. We will show you that. We'll take you through that in just a little bit. A computer, speakers, and a microphone. So as long as we're using the Chromebook that you received from the district, you, all of those are gonna be very capable for your student to do. So we have the question of which method book? So if your child is going to be learning a brass or a woodwind instrument, we will be studying out of the book Essential Elements for Band. And actually on Smart Music, they still call it Essential Elements 2000. But anymore, it's called Essential Elements for Band. It'll be book one that comes in uh, actually three different books now, book one, book two, and book three. So you want to make sure you're looking for book one and that it's for your particular instrument. So make sure that it says flute, clarinet, saxophone, etc. Now, if you are in, um, this might actually be a, uh, Mr. Orlando, can you, can you tell me about your mallet players? My uh, mallet players use the essential elements. Okay, that's what I thought. Well, and, and also, um, so if you're doing mallet percussion, glock and spiel, uh, they would be using essential elements. Now, if you are at Aston and Coburn, we'll actually start off by learning a little bit of piano first. So if all you have is an electric piano keyboard type thing at home, we will be using the Schwamm Pre-A, also known as the Green Book. And that again is for all students who are interested in glockenspiel. If your, in, or your child is instrument, sorry, <laughs> if your child is interested in learning the snare drum, we will be using the Alfred's drum method. So that again comes in two different books or it comes in a complete. So you could either spend the money and get the complete, which will take them all the way through middle school, or you could just simply get the book one. And to be honest, I'm not quite sure what uh, Mr. Hazlett uses at the middle school. So I would probably just say, stay with book one for, for at, the, at this moment. So we're talking about the Smart Music app, how you can uh, achieve that is by going to home.smartmusic.com. And I think that's also in a slide later. 
online videos and play along tracks. That is what's included in the physical book that you get for essential elements. So all of the brass and woodwind students, they give you this little code that you can go on to their interactive website to see all sorts of videos, how to put the instrument together, how to care for your instrument, and then also some play along tracks, which smart music does as well. So it's just another avenue that can do that. Plus, we'll also be supplementing things in smart music as well. So we might send something like Let's Go Band or um, the Hey Song or something like that as we prepare for some sort of concert, if and when, well, not if, when we are given the clearance to have a concert. Well, that's interesting. Show anyway. Oh, there we go. So joining Smart Music. So we will be sending out this PowerPoint uh, along with the recording. This has this clickable link that you can click and it'll be a tutorial of how to join Smart Music. Basically, the rundown is in order to access it, you go to home.smartmusic.com. If you've never used Smart Music before, so probably most of us, right, if we are in four, uh, have a fourth grade student, um, you would go to that website and then towards the bottom, you would click where it says join a class, right underneath students need to enroll in class. If they're returning, you could also do the same thing. You could click join a class, or if you're already logged in, in the upper right hand corner, the, and under one of the icons, which unfortunately that clip didn't come, that picture didn't come up, this random arrow, <laughs> um, you'll be able to click one of the icons and it'll say join a class. And at that point, you can um, enter a class code. Now to show you the, what, a, what these class codes look like, they are, um, well in this picture it's really small, but it's a one, it's an eight, it's an eight uh, character code that they will enter in and then you get to fill out the rest of the uh, sign up process. Those will be on both of our Schoology pages and accessible, uh, uh, yeah, through, through Schoology pages in the instrumental course. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're brand new and you've never created your account, we uh, ask that for the primary email when signing up for the class that the students use their pdsdstudents.org org email address, what they're using to sign into Schoology. It'll actually ask for a backup email as well, just in case um, password reset emails for some reason aren't coming to your child's uh, PDSD student's email account. So that would actually send the password reset link to ours as well. So again, primary, use your students, email address p at pdsdstudents.org. And for the backup email, either use mine, which is mstadnicki at pdsd.org, or you would use uh, Mr. Orlando, C. Orlando at pdsd.org. And we are recommending that just to keep things simple so that we're not forgetting and, and trying to remember 50 billion passwords, it's okay to use the same password that your, your student is signing into Schoology with as of uh, this year, it is Google 21. Now, if you are a returning family who had smart music last year, you're going to uh, have to uh, remember what password you used last year. Maybe it was Google 20. Maybe it was something completely unique that you created. Um, so those passwords are controlled by you. Those aren't updated by the school district. Mr. Orlando, is that should I, is there anything to add to that? No, I believe that covers everything with that. Okay, great. Oh. 
So some expectations that we have, we ask for promptness, engagement, listening, uh, taught uh, acceptable behavior, and preparation. So coming to our virtual lessons, uh, they must be prepared by having their instrument, their lesson book nearby, and a pencil. Now we're recommending that you're doing that in a space where you can play your instrument, where you have a chair that is, um, is sturdy, has a straight back, and uh, so that the, the child can have awesome posture, sitting up nice and tall, taking up lots of space. They should also have enough room that they can control their instrument. So thinking about maybe trombone players um, have enough room in front for the slide. So maybe you have to go to the left or to the right and uh, maybe a, a, a dedicated place that you could always leave your instrument set up, have your uh, music stand set up, things like that. And I would think maybe for right now, it's most, uh, mostly where your child is doing all of their, their coursework um, for, for online. Again, they are responsible for their own lesson time. It's, it's almost like we can send messages on Schoology saying, hey, where are you? But if they're, if they're engaged in, you know, in another Zoom such as that, uh, it's really uh, difficult. So we'd maybe even recommend putting a post-it note somewhere nearby on the desk or on the Chromebook that has the lesson day and the lesson time. And then, of course, be a team player. That's what's going to get us through this whole entire thing. It's hard to get through uh, rough times alone. So we're, we're, we're expecting that students are going to, uh, in any ways that they can, interact with each other in a positive way, help build each other up, and offer a friend some help anytime that they need. So one of the reasons why we chose a static lesson time, um, what I mean by that is same day, same time for the each lesson group, is it's that it's another thing that's just going to hopefully make things easier to keep track of. There's a lot of things everyone's trying to keep track of at home. So we hoped that putting the flute lesson for whatever school at the same day at the same time uh, would make things a whole lot easier. I do see another hand raised in our participant list. Uh, just a reminder that if it's a question, please use the Q&A function to type your question in and we will either answer it live or a reply will be typed back to you. So this is really for when we return to in-school instruction. So just a, a heads up, you are completely liable for your instrument. If anything should happen to it, that is uh, on you and your student. Uh, I will put a, a plug in here for if you are planning on renting with music and art. We highly recommend what they call the liability damage waiver. That way you can go to sleep worry free if anything should happen to your instrument. And I believe Mr. Rotz will be able to talk a little bit more about that when we get to his part. So uh, practicing. Practicing, uh, incredibly important. Practice, practice, practice. Music is a foreign language. Um, it's something I think we talk about in our lessons all the time. We read music just like we would read a book, top to bottom, left to right. Um, instead of using reading letters, words, and punctuations, we have music notes, rests, and other symbols that we have to learn ourselves. Um, it is. It's a completely new language. It's a new set of skills that we just have to immerse ourselves in the culture of it. So when we, uh, in our band lesson, we're, we're talking band, we're using music terminology, we're immersing, uh, we're immersing ourselves into the culture of band and music. We've talked about how learning to play a musical instrument is a lifelong process where skills just have to be reinforced. Um, Playing music, performing music, is a complex task. 
it utilizes reading skills, reasoning, and high and uh, eye hand coordination, oral or listening skills, um, all happening at the same time. There's a lot of multitasking that has to go on. Um, at first, it can definitely be overwhelming, overwhelming, but with practice, a lot of these things become second nature or even muscle memory. So once we get certain parts of playing an instrument to the muscle, the muscle, mem muscle memory part, my apologies, uh, into the second hand nature thing, uh, part of things, um, the more, um, more intricate tasks of music performance can be focused on once the mechanics of it become secondhand. Uh, this is a great little quote. I love saying it. Students ask me, how often should I practice? Uh, every day that you eat is the day you should practice, which is definitely every day. That's your goal. Is it okay to practice three or four times out of our week? It is, of course. Um, there's a lot of things everyone has to do, but your goal is to try to practice every day that you eat, right? Play the amount of fingers on a hand per week. That's perfect. Five is the gold number. Seven is like overachieving. Three to four will still get the work done, I think, as well. And then a lot of students ask me, well, how long should I be playing my instrument every time I practice? Um, to answer that, it is um, literally sometimes taking an instrument out, playing for five minutes at a time can be enough practice, depending on the song and the music we're working on. Could be 10, could be 15 or 20 minutes. I, most students, once they start playing an instrument, they're like, okay, five minutes. I can do five minutes. That's not bad. But then as soon as they start playing, they'll start telling me like, oh, I played my instrument for 30 minutes last night. I had a lot of fun. So the fun side of playing an instrument kind of overtakes what is the working, the work part of playing an instrument. And then students have a great time playing instruments at home where it doesn't feel like practice anymore. It's just a fun activity to do as well. Right. And, and to say it's better if you're, if you're only having a budget of one hour a week, it's best to do, um, you know, 10 or 10 minutes for six days rather than an hour on say Saturday and then not touch it again until the next lesson. So a little bit each and every day is a lot better than doing it once. It's called, you know, I'm thinking about my time with Duolingo. It is something that, you know, as learning a new language, you, you need to stay with that and do it a little bit every day. And sure, if you do it once a week, you're going to pick up some things. You'll learn some vocabulary. You'll learn some grammar, right? You'll learn how to read this note. You'll learn how to press that button. Um, but, you know, the, the progress will be much more delayed than uh, a student who will be able to dedicate, you know, five or ten minutes. And that's okay. Every student is going to progress at their own rate. Everyone, like I said at the beginning, still continues to participate at the best of their ability. They're always included. So no shame if, you know, this week it was really busy and I just couldn't get to it. Um, you know, that's fine. We all have those kinds of busy weeks and we understand that. So an incentive that uh, some of the students that you might have seen carrying cases around, uh, especially last year, is something called band karate. So band karate is just this incentive that we have that rewards students who prog uh, progress on their instrument, kind of, you know, similar to learning some sort of martial art. So through a series of prescribed checkpoints, between, you know, starting in fourth grade and usually continuing into fifth grade is this progression of colors, you know, you, white, yellow, orange as they go through. Uh, when we are doing this in person, we're handing out things that students can attach to their cases as kind of a, a visual uh, reward, pat on the back to, you know, to say, to, to, to celebrate their progress. Right now, for me, it's simply, 
clicking a button and adding these badges so that they're showing up on Schoology. And so they could take a look at that and, and take pride in those kinds of things. Or, you know, and once we do return to in-person instruction, we'll certainly be able to get all of those things into, uh, well, onto their cases to help display the awesome work that they've been doing. Yeah, and band karate is a lot of fun. Um, the kids love it. I know that um, one thing I definitely try to do a lot of is when a student earns a belt, I'll put it out on my Twitter page with a photo of them holding their belt on their case. Now, once again, when we were in school, uh, there will be now it's I, well actually the new way of doing that at least for virtual learning uh, today a clarinet player at Parkside in fourth grade um, had his clarinet ready to go first lesson he played hot cross buns for it uh, learned on his own and then I said oh my gosh you just earned your white belt in band karate but you don't even know that because the white belt test uh, for my band class as a panel on Parkside is hot cross buns so without him even knowing, he had already earned his white belt. So simply took a photo of him holding his clarinet, big smile on, on the Zoom. Uh, we'll post that out on Twitter and the Instagram page so that people can see that and celebrate him. Um, one thing that's been done in the past, and definitely going to try to do that as well this year, for Pennell and Parkside, when a B-band student moves up, I'm sorry, when they earn their red belt at any point during the school year, I like to move them up to a band. Now, how can that really happen during virtual? I don't know, that's a very good question. That is that is a dream of mine to keep that system going for Pendle and Parkside, um, but definitely more information on that to come. Red belt is usually a belt earned towards the end of the school year, either way. So we're not quite there yet that we have to think about a red belt too soon. Right, and that's the awesome thing about having these subscriptions for smart music, those students who are super motivated to, to earn what's coming up next, they can work on their own, work ahead, look and see what's coming up in the book and uh, start preparing for those right away. So some tips to help ensure your child's success. Of course, making sure that it is of quality and in good working order. Uh, we usually say you can bring those in and we'll give it a, a test out, but you know, given the circumstances of being in a pandemic, that's not really something that we are doing. If you are looking to make sure that it is of quality and good working order, you could always take it to a local repair shop and they can take a look at it for you. I know Music and Arts offers that service, so if you wanted to utilize them, they will be able to make sure that the instrument is in good working order. Again, the quiet place with a firm chair and a music stand. Uh, so not only just for lessons, but also for that personal practice time. And then when you have the, to, for practicing, you should make sure that it's the same time each day as to create a part of your daily schedule. So it could be as soon as school is finished, immediately, or you know, you wanna take a little bit of a break before you go back to the screen or back to work. You know, maybe it's something that you do after dinner, right before bed, maybe first thing in the morning, if you wanna bug the neighbors at 6.30 with the sound of the trumpet. Uh, I don't, I guess I don't advocate for that, I but, that's what, that's uh, what <laughs> um, you know, it, but the key is just being consistent, find, schedule that time, stick with it. It's just like going to the gym, right? If you plan it in your daily schedule, you are more, and, uh, more likely than not going to continue with that, uh, with that goal in mind, right? So uh, with daily practice, it becomes habit and eventually have those good habits will result in the success. And we encour encourage you to listen in. Uh, ask them what they've been working on. What have you been practicing? And uh, let them play for you. Give them praise. I mean, you know, with young musicians, there's gonna be mistakes 
there are going to be some really interesting sounds Ooh. if you've never heard of a beginning instrumentalist before uh they're going to be so interesting <laughs> but it is so important that you that you keep your optimism you keep your positivity your child is really going to take their cues from you so i mean as loud or crazy as a beginning instrument can be you know please try to keep all the all your faces or you know covering of the ears um out of sight and out of out of the earshot of your child because like we said learning an instrument is quite the long process there's a lot of fine motor skills in our faces if you're a wind instrument uh, to actually learn how to control what's happening and create those good sounds those good sounds will come so anything that you can do to offer that encouragement say that sounded great or even if you don't want to say that sounded great you can say something like that's coming along or that sounds so much better this week than last week you know just some sort of praise to to, to help keep them in the game i completely agree and uh, when we were having concerts when we'd have the um, like a b band assembly winter concert where they're paying playing just very basic songs out of their lesson book uh, one thing i always like to tell those families i'm like when you hear it now I just want you to remember this sound and compare it to when we get to the springtime. Um, even just in a single school year, it's, it's leaps and bounds of progress that can be made. It's like Mr. Stadnicki said though, it's gonna start rough and interesting, but with a live lesson once a week, practice at home and support from everyone, uh, they do make a lot of progress very quickly. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing that you brought up, the whole idea of, of realizing where we start and where we end. You know, actually take some videos of, uh, of your child attempting to play a sound. And then maybe when we get around uh, Christmas time, play Jingle Bells, and you look back to what the sounds were first at the beginning and compare, and then finally you, uh, playing a song at the end of the year, and you can sit down, scroll through those videos, and just say, wow, we've really come a long way. Ah, the Q word. It's, it's not great. Daggers to the heart every single time the q word that's right sometimes they just want to quit or haven't been practicing don't panic don't sell that instrument just yet cases are handled on an individual basis this is a a, a, a team effort you know it, before we actually get to that q word there should have been lots of dialogue uh, between you and, and us, the teachers, uh, trying to problem solve and nip things in the bud before they actually turn into bigger problems. So if you're noticing that things, some things are starting to happen, you know, this isn't quite clicking, uh, maybe it's, e it's some, as easy as, you know, they're practicing and it's not sounding right, and it's because there's something wrong with their instrument. One thing that's, that's going to be a little bit of a challenge with us being virtual is that it's hard for us to take that instrument and say, oh, it's actually missing this screw here, or that you have a pin that popped here. Um, so, you know, it could simply be there's a very minor thing that has to happen with our instrument. Other things, like I said, can be solved before it becomes a big problem. So again, we're here, please work with us. We're here to work with you and to support you in any way that we can. So instrumental music lessons starting soon. Uh, I know I believe uh, I had some lessons today. I believe as did uh, Mr. Stenicki. We're definitely warming up to really ramping up full speed here. Uh, beginners, 
will be more than likely starting without instruments. I did have a few students today uh, that did have their instrument, but they did not have to have it for their lesson today. Um, advanced students, this, if this is their second year in band, they should still have their instrument from last year. Um, Student-owned instruments being brought in for, for inspection uh, is definitely a little tricky right now. That's something we'd have to coordinate with our building principals uh, for that type of process. Um, schedules and Zoom links are found on Schoology and will be emailed. I've already had some parents reaching out uh, trying to clarify when the band lesson is. It's posted on Schoology. I do recommend for the way I posted my band schedule, you view it on a laptop or the Chromebook provided. Uh, the schedule is a little wonky if you're looking at it on a phone through the app. But you should be to be able to view the Pendleton Parkside Band uh, band schedule uh, easily on a Chromebook or a laptop without issue. Okay. So when we do return to everything in person and we're given the green light for concerts, this will be our performance attire. So not anything that's at our forefront. We have our formal dress, black and white. Just This is just so that things don't become a shock later on when we actually do have performances. And then you know, we have a, a uniform such as assemblies, field trips, our Blue Rocks game that we wear our Pendelco music t-shirt and I'm um, not quite sure how that will be run this year, but that is something that will be made available as well. You could find all sorts of information at the band, the official band's websites or on Schoology. Uh, you can look in both places. There's oftentimes, if it's here, it's also there. Um, the Google Sites, I think, is a, a little bit more conducive to organizing information. So on these websites, you got web links, forms, information about our programs, schedules, music and arts information, you, all those things. Please access those. We want to thank you so much for joining us tonight and supporting your child's desire to be musical. Quick reminder, if you have not already filled out the Google form that was emailed out that, was, that would indicate uh, what instrument your child is pl uh, planning to play or has already started to play, please make sure you do that. Again, that goes back with the whole uh, scheduling, making sure that if a, if a student is receiving services, we know who it is and we can make those scheduling uh, lesson times uh, without conflict. And uh, before anyone leaves, uh, we do have our music and arts representative coming on after us to talk about instrument rentals. So if you are a family member wanting to learn how to rent an instrument, please stay with us. So introducing from music and arts, Brian Rotz. He's known as an educational representative. We'd like to let you know that Music and Arts is an independent music retail company. So you working with Music and Arts is, is going to be directly between you and the company. The school has no stake in the instruments that are provided by them. They offer, uh, so we allow them to service our school district because Mr. Orlando and I believe that the, their rental program is absolutely 100% fair and uh, reasonably priced. Uh, you can compare to any of the, the local uh, um, music stores. There, everything is very comparable, if not better, by music and art. Um, so all communication, if you choose for music and art, should go directly between you and them. And without, again, further ado, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let Mr. Rotz take over. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Rotz, and I'm... Uh, on behalf of Music and Arts, I'm very pleased to be to serve as an educational representative uh, for the Pendelco School District. 
Uh, I myself, uh, still at the age of 62, I play my instrument in a community band. It's called the Lukens Band. It's uh, located just out towards Downingtown, Pennsylvania. And I have to say, when I get uh, to play in the band, I bring uh, up the uh, uh, bring down the average age of the player there. We have players in their 70s and 80s that are still playing their instrument and loving everything about it. Um, first, I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight. Uh, we've touched on that there's so much research that music makes your child smarter. But I personally think music also makes us all better, human beings. So thank you for attending and showing interest in the music program. Also, thank you to Mr. Orlando and Mr. Stidnicki for the opportunity to share our rapid rental program this evening. I've been involved with the music program for many years and I help supply what they need to be successful. I know what brands they prefer and make sure to provide only high quality instruments. And I know they've already mentioned that if you do not rent from us, please make sure the instrument you provide your child is of a high quality so they can succeed in this wonderful program. Uh, music and Arts is the leading instrument, uh, instrument provider chosen by educators across the United States. We have over 200 plus educational representatives, retail stores, and affiliate locations that support the start of nearly a quarter million new musicians each year. We have a location nearby in Broomall in the Lawrence Park Shopping Center. Our local presence combined with our online offerings and my personal service makes us the most accessible, convenient, and affordable provider for you. Some of the highlights of our rapid rental program are returning or exchanging the instrument at any time with no penalty. If you choose to exchange, we urge you to be, be involved with your director so that they can guide you to the right uh, choice. Uh, we offer a maintenance plan that covers repairs while you are renting. 100% of the rental payments apply towards the purchase of the instrument. We do offer special purchase discounts that are exclusively available to our rental customers. And we have the preferred instrument brands, books, and supplies for Mr. Orlando's and Mr. Stednicki's classes. Renting with us is very simple. You can do it several different ways. You can get your instrument at our Lawrence Park store. Uh, just pick it up there with all the supplies you need. You can have it shipped to your home for 10 to $15 or by appointment with your directors and with permission of administration, we can have it delivered to your school for pickup during school hours. To get all this started, you just go to musicarts.com backslash rentals to reserve your instrument and select your delivery option at checkout. Even if you're going to rent at the store, it really helps if you go onto the website and sign up for pickup at store then they can have everything set aside and prepared for you when you visit. And even we have, even have curbside service available if that's preferred. So you might be thinking, how does all this rental stuff work? Well, the prices vary by instrument and you can see the exact pricing when you are online. But all the instruments have two plans to choose from. We have a four and a half trial period or a longer 10 month program, which covers the school year. Either trial period goes into automatic, automatic monthly rental billing after the trial period is over. The trial period is a specially priced period that you, along with your director, can see if the student is really going to have an aptitude for the musical instrument. Again, you can choose to stop your rental at any time. You can return it right at the store or you can call our customer service to get a return authorization and with permission, return it to the school. Please just do, excuse me, please do not leave your instrument at school without us knowing about it. You might be thinking, which trial period should I choose? I like to call the 10 month program the optimistic parent program, as you want your child to make sure to give some effort to playing the instrument for the school year. And also there's that spring concert that you'd like them to participate in. I have to say most students in this district complete the full school year, and I highly recommend the longer trial period so that you do not need to worry about the monthly charges. 
Additionally, we have in years past offered a 10 month rental customers the option to keep the instrument through the summer and start a new 10 month contract starting in September. Basically, you get the summer for free if you re-up for the 10 month trial period. This is called our renewal plan. You get mailed this uh, to your home address uh, when the time to be thinking about it uh, is here. But of course, you know your child best. Either initial trial period will save you money in the long run while the student is beginning. No matter how hard your child tries to keep their rented instrument in perfect condition, sometime things happen. Our damage coverage will protect your investment in the unfortunate event it is stolen, damaged, or in need of repair. You may cancel this coverage at any time, but you can only order it when you begin your agreement. It cannot be added later. The pricing and details are available during your online rental process. And concerning the online rental process, it's very easy and all the required items are already in your cart as you check out as a guest. If you have any questions while proceeding through the online rental, a chat feature is available for any questions you may have and representatives are available to help you uh, most hours. If you are interested in the keyboard or percussion for Mr. Stadnicki, no rental is necessary. All items for these lessons may be purchased online or at our store. Your teachers have the, uh, Mr. Stadnicki has the forms with all the details for purchasing these items online uh, and having them shipped directly to your home. They also have the music and arts rental flyer and uh, instructions on our rapid rental process through the online website that they will provide. Uh, in closing, if you have any questions, please re out, reach out to your directors or myself, and I urge you to uh, send me an email at brotz at musicarts.com, and I would be glad to answer your questions or fulfill any specific needs you might have. Again, I appreciate you attending this evening, and uh, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, Brian. So appreciate you hanging out and spending some time with us this evening. Uh, we do love everything that you do for us. You're always uh, super friendly, super knowledgeable, always there to lend a hand. So we appreciate uh, everything that you do for our students, for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So, I mean, just to wrap things up, we are in such a great school district that provides uh, exceptional music education to our students. Uh, you can probably see behind me. 2020 best communities for music education. It's not just us that does it. It is you, you're a part of this too. You're the ones who are, are, are there supporting your students, your children, uh, your neighbors. Uh, we, are all in, we are all in this together if we wanna reference that movie. Um, certainly, right, it takes a village. And you know, I certainly did wanna take this time to say thank you to the Pendelco community for uh, 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 acknowledging, appreciating, and supporting uh, the music education in all of our students' lives. So with that, um, I'm going to offer you my thanks. Thank you for being here. I know you're in a little long, lots of information to talk about. Uh, so thank you for hanging in there on behalf of myself. Yes, and thank you as, as well. It's going to be an awesome school year. I'm super excited to be teaching live lessons over Zoom, no matter where we are. Uh, band is happening. You should join the band. It's a great time. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a great night.